Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Cumulative voting. How many directors can we elect? Calculation. Yeah. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side in the Practice Problems tab, then down in the 1716 Cumulative Voting, How Many Directors Can We Elect tab. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our Practice Problems will be down in the text area as well. Same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, information up top or going through the calculations on down below. Now, this is going to be another problem related to cumulative voting, but the question is going to be slightly different, so this will be a different type of problem related to cumulative voting. If you want to take a look at cumulative voting in more detail, take a look at the first practice problem, practice problem one, where we have basically the intro problem for it. Quick recap on the cumulative voting. It's going to be a variant from kind of a standard voting system. We're thinking about a situation such as electing the board of directors where we have so many seats. In this case, we have 20 seats of the board of directors and we need to elect so many people into those seats. So you can have a same kind of situation in other areas for uh, say not-for-profit organizations and government organizations if you know the term or you see the term it's a cumulative voting type of setup then you might have similar rules as you think about the process so two questions that can be asked in prior presentations we've been asking the question how many shares would be required in order to reach so many seats so in other words if we had 20 seats in this case to be elected on the board and remember we're seeing ourselves as the shareholders the owners who are going to elect the board members the board members then are the people that then elect or hire management such as top management who then manage the company so how do we have control over the company as the owners we elect our representatives the board of directors and so that's that's where we are at at this point in time so if then we wanted to ask the question of how many shares would i need in order to basically get so many people uh, elected onto the board of directors. That's one question that we might have. The second question we might have is, given the number of shares that I have, how many people could I basically guarantee to pick up on the board of directors uh, if, if we were to use our maximizing strategy to consolidate our votes? And that's the question we're going to be focusing in on here. So we're looking at the number of directors that can be elected. Our information, we're saying the minority shares are 10,500. We'll concentrate on ourselves as basically being the minority. That's typically the general scenario with the cumulative voting scenario. Although you can use it, you know, in, in, in any structure, depending on your circumstances, you might be the majority and think about the, the same type of strategy within there. But the idea being that if it was a majority situation and the and it was a situation with a straight up vote for all 20 seats everybody voted for each of the seats then the majority would win if you had 51 votes you would win if it's something uh, a cumulative voting system we'll be able to isolate or focus our votes and that's going to be the idea so that's why we'll typically focus ourselves to be the, the minority position so we'll say it's the 10,500 here and uh, the board seats that are up are 20 and the outstanding shares are 55,000 outstanding shares. Now, the formula we looked at last time are the shares required. If you're looking at this in terms of a book question, then uh, and you're trying to think about how to do this for like a test question or something like that, you'll probably see these two as two separate formulas. And you can memorize them as two separate formulas, but of course they are related. So it could be easier to just see that they're related and then be able to you know, make it easier to memorize and possibly plug in for the unknown and solve it basically algebraically. So we'll show that here. The prior calculation, the shares required would be the number of directors needed times the total number of shares outstanding divided by the total number of directors to be elected plus one, all of that plus one. The new formula, the number of directors that can be elected is going to be so given the shares that we have 10,500 how many of these 20 people could we elect for example that would be equal to the shares owned minus one times the total number of directors to be elected plus one divided by the total number of shares outstanding we're going to actually start off with the second one here and basically kind of back into it using a, a tool like a goal seek tool but you can also do it basically you know algebraically plug in for the unknown and then do your algebra solving for basically the unknown so it would look something like this if we put this into a table format and then we'll do this this top formula 
we're going to say the number of directors desired. Now, if it was not known, and I plug this just into a worksheet in Excel, I would just plug some number like five in here or something like that, so that we can then work through it and then use goal seek to figure out what the end result would be. If you memorized one of these formulas, but not the other, you can also basically think of this formula up top. And and basically, that would be x, right, you'd be solving for for x, the unknown, and then do your algebra on it. So the outstanding shares are going to be 55,000 shares, so the 55,000 shares outstanding, we've got the 4.01 times the 55,000 shares gives us the uh, 22479. And then we're going to take the total number of directors to be elected. Now we're on the denominator here, and just simply add one to that plus one, that gives us the 21. So now we've got the numerator and the denominator, we could divide that out if we divide that out, then we would be taking the 220, 479 divided by 21, that would give us the 10,499, 10,499, then we'll take that whole thing plus one, and that would give us our result of the 10,005. Now in this case, uh, we have the answer here of 4.01 up top, but you can imagine a situation if it were in Excel and we just put five there, the end result would be some something other than 10,500. And then we can ask um, Excel to basically change this item up top to be whatever it needs to be to get to the end result that we know should be 10,500, that being what's given for the minority shares. And that's one way we can back into this. You could do that in a worksheet. So if you have a worksheet that, that you've set up with this one formula, you can use Goal Seek to do that. We do do this in Excel, so you can check that out. And obviously that same concept can be used by simply plugging in the unknown here algebraically and then solving for it algebraically, allowing you possibly not have to fully memorize maybe two equations if you need to go into a test situation with this kind of thing. You wanna know the relationship between these items. So then uh, we can also think about that. Let's do the same formula down here the number of directors that can be elected using the second formula going straight there. This is the number of directors that can be elected shares owned minus one times total number of directors to be elected plus one divided by the total number of shares outstanding. So in that case, we would take the shares owned minus one. So we had the shares owned was 10,500 minus one 10,499. The directors to be elected plus one. We were electing 20 directors plus one would give us the 21. And then we'll take that and multiply it out. Let's do that in the calculator just for the fun of it. We've got the 10,499 times 21 is going to give us the 22,479. 22,479. We're going to take that and we're going to divide it by the total number of shares outstanding, which of course is the 55 to get to the end result of the 4.01. The 4.01, taking that divided by the 55,000, there's the 4.01. Now, obviously, uh, we can't elect 0 0.01 of a director, so we'd have to drop generally the decimal and we'd be, just, we'd be uh, at the four then. Now, if that would be the answer. So if you were to do this in a book problem, you can say that that's it. So if we had basically the 10,500 minority shares and there's 20 seats and there was 55,000 outstanding, we could basically pick up four after dropping the decimal. But then you probably want to think it through if you if you want to mold this and actually understand it. So let's kind of mull this through, think it over. Let's think of our scenario. We're going to say outstanding shares, outstanding shares. We got 55,000 shares times the total number of directors to be elected, which we said was 20. That means that the shares outstanding in total come out to 1,100,000. Our shares as the minority here, so we're, we're the minority group of that 10,005. We're going to say, how many votes do we have? We have control of 10,500 outstanding shares times 20. That means that we have votes of 2,000, I mean, 210,000. What does the majority have? Now, remember, when we think of the majority here, this could be, you know, people that are in the majority, or it could be a situation where, you know, there's multiple people, and we're kind of assuming the, the worst case scenario. So we're actually assuming kind of two groups, us and then everybody else. Now, everybody else might be a majority that's going to try to vote against us. But uh, that's not necessarily the case. And in future presentations, we'll start looking at more nuanced, a uh, more nuanced kind of example where we where we know there's a faction that's going to try to vote us down. And possibly there's a faction that we just don't know about. You have that unknown kind of situation in there that could vary what your strategy will be as well. But when you're looking at the worst case scenario, how many people could we lock down assuming everybody else was going to try to block us, then 
we're going to say everybody else, the majority would then be the 55,000 minus the 10,005 would be the 44,5 times 20. There's the 890,000 votes that could, uh, could work against us. So then if we, if we put this into our candidate scenario, we could say, all right, there's 20 seats. There's a lot more seats here. So it's a more complicated type of example that we've seen in the past. And we want to pick up then these are the, the names. So it's just A through V. These are the number of the, the names of the candidates. We're going to imagine A through D. We're just picking the top four. Those are our candidates. Now, clearly, if we were the mon minority fraction and we, we elected these candidates to be up for vote, then the majority, the, you know, the, the opposing faction would know about that because those are the people we elected. So they would know that much. And so they might then, you know, try to strategize against us. You know, how much is known by the two parties when you're looking at a game theory type of situation is something uh, that's that's up in the air, right? But they would know that much. And so we're going to say, what what's our strategy? We're going to take the the total votes that we have, which we said was the uh, 210,000, and we're going to pick up four. We can lock down four by splitting that up 52.5 to our four seats right there. So we split that up 52.5 to the four seats. And then what's the majority going to do? Well, if they know our strategy, then they what they're going to try to do is not vote for any of our candidates, obviously. <laughs> they're going to then vote for the other candidates in such a way that they're going to try to beat our candidates. And they need to get all of these five through 20, we basically give them because because we didn't vote for them at all. But they have to have all of them to beat all of our all of our four positions here in order in order for them to beat out one of our positions so they'd have to basically have it they could try to go for the tie again but they could we're going to say they're trying to beat us out by one 52 501 if they were to do that all the way down then this last component would have to be 49 948 in other words they're trying to beat us with all their candidates by one vote and see if they can get this last one down here to beat us out. But they can't, it can't really get there. This U can't get there because they only have enough votes to get 49,984. This whole string of votes, although the total's not down here, adds up to, it should add up to, hopefully, the 890,000 votes that the majority has. So that means the total votes, and if we were to imagine this scenario working out, if we totaled this up, we got the 52.5 for our four, and then here's all the majority votes that would be lined up. If we add, if we put them in our table to the right and sort them by by the winners on top, then we're looking 20 seats. So our our people down here, all their people are above us, but our A through D are still in the top 20 here. This U, the U number that which was their last vote right here, their last candidate couldn't beat us out. They couldn't beat out the last four. That's the point of the strategy. So they're not going to win at the top of the ticket using this strategy. They're not going to have the mandate, <laughs> you know, of having the most votes and try to politically use that as a as a some kind of tool. But they're going to be on the board. And so that that and that's the idea, because you're just trying to clear the hurdle to be in the top 20. If you're on the board, you're on the board. Uh, and, and, you know, so that's the that's the idea.